A warm welcome to all of you who have chosen to tune in today. The focus of this short reflection is on the passages from the Gospel according to Mark for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And I will begin with reading that Gospel now. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, <clears throat> it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it off. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. I think these were hard ideas to grasp, especially for the disciples as they were living through these experiences. We, however, have the benefit of of learning about the Gospel as we look back through history. The words teaching and teacher are found in the Gospel passages from last Sunday and in today's Gospel. In both cases, we heard Jesus challenging the disciples and trying to teach them about a new lifestyle. Teachings and lessons from last week flow into this week. Some examples are, last week we heard, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. The disciples did not understand this and were afraid to question Jesus. How often does something like this happen when we don't understand something and don't question it because we are afraid to show our ignorance? We also heard the words, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. These words turn conventional wisdom upside down. Because don't most people want to be first and have everyone else wait on them? And a third example, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. These ideas were certainly different and counterintuitive. And I can understand if the disciples did not realize the significance of what they heard Jesus saying. But, Jesus was still trying to teach them and help them come to a new understanding. This process of teaching continues in the Gospel for this Sunday, with the word teacher being a key word that comes at the beginning of the Gospel passage. What follows then are an, a collection of teachings with no obvious unifying theme. The first example is found in the words, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, <clears throat> and we tried to prevent him, because he does not follow us. 
This shows the disciples focusing on themselves and provides a teachable moment for Jesus. And Jesus, ever the teacher, instructs them again, saying, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. This lesson is followed by another as Jesus tells them that anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will surely not lose his reward. This lesson shows that a focus on others versus taking care of oneself is more important, especially when doing for others in Jesus' name. Anything done for the sake of his name will be rewarded, even <clears throat> if it is just getting a cup of water. Now, when I was doing this reflection and came to that thought, it reminded me of the many times <clears throat> over the years of taking care of my children and grandchildren that in the middle of the night I would be wakened up by the sound of I want a drink of water. I would hear that <clears throat> and hope that if I ignored it <clears throat> they would fall back to sleep. And it never seemed to fail that after a short time when I thought that that was happening, I would hear louder, I want a drink of water. And if I was really tired and didn't get out of bed, I would wait some more and usually I didn't hear it a third time, but then I was wakened up by a poke, 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 poke. Because whoever was looking for a drink of water would come over and make sure I was awake to get it for them. <clears throat> so, a simple thing is getting a drink of water, getting up, being wakened up of a sound sleep. is something that I think many of us can relate to. And it just, that experience came to mind with this thought, anything done for the sake of his name will be rewarded, even if it is just getting a cup of water. But we have to remember that when we get the cup of water, we're doing it in the name of Jesus. So, moving on to the last and most involved lesson is when Jesus warns that anyone who would corrupt the innocent and cause one of the little ones who believe in him to sin would face dire consequences. For example, including perhaps they would have a great millstone put around their neck and find themselves being tossed into the sea. More graphic examples follow to drive the message home that there are consequences for sin. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Better to be maimed than to go with two hands into the unquenchable fire of Gehenna. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Better to be a cripple than with two feet to be thrown into the unquenchable fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be tossed into the unquenchable fire. Now this graphic imagery of cutting off body parts that might cause one to sin is spoken metaphorically. This graphic imagery is emphasized to teach us that all habits, weaknesses, and poor choices that lead one to sin have consequences. The image of blind and limping followers 
should jolt us to realize the importance of removing any habits and weaknesses that may prevent us from reaching our eternal salvation in the heavenly kingdom of God. So, how do we do this? There's probably many answers, but to answer one answer would be let's focus on our individual faith journey. Whether we are young, old, in between, male or female, we all have one thing in common, and that is that we are on a journey. A faith journey that began with our baptism. We are guided by the light of Christ and given the goal or destination of our faith journey in a beautiful prayer that is part of the rite of baptism. And here is the prayer. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He or she is to walk always as a child of the light. May they, go, may they keep the flame of faith alive in their heart. And when the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. I love this prayer. Each time that I prayed it, I tried to imagine what it would be like to go out to meet the Lord with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom, especially after having navigated the difficulties of a lifelong faith journey. And it just seemed to me it would be one grand celebration something to look forward to. All of us need to pay attention to our ongoing faith journey, mm -hmm. especially parents and godparents who are responsible for and influence children. Yes, there are warnings here, but the good news is that we are empowered in many ways, for example, through prayer and the sacraments, to make good choices and do the right things to get to the kingdom of God at the end of our faith journey, and to guide others to get there as well. In close, so in closing, I think there is much food for thought in the lessons contained in these Gospels. I suggest we find a quiet place, take a break, see what comes to mind, think about it. Pray about it, and then look for ways that enliven our ongoing faith journey. May God bless us as we continue on our journey. Mm -hmm.